There's that great yeah. quote, which is, uh, it's something I think that we shouldn't lose sight of. It is apocryphally attributed to Sun Tzu, which is, if you wait by the river long enough, the bodies of your enemies will float by. I think it's been a recurring theme of, uh, of, of this broadcast. But I mean, sadly, in literal form, um, Farian. Uh, but, you know, also CrowdStrike. So let's round out with Max Boo. Yeah. So Max Boo, the Russiagate extraordinaire fixture of mainstream media, television, MSNBC propaganda. Um, if you guys ever watch it, you are sure to have seen him telling us why war is very important and justified. Um, yeah. His wife, ironically named Sue Me, uh has <laughs> just it can't be just, real it can't be real like, her name is sue me terry um, and a prosecutor, a former, a prosecutor for terry yeah uh she has been indicted by the justice department uh i'm sorry by a grand jury uh of working as an unregistered foreign agent read spy of mm. the south korean government um, she is also a member, a former uh, CIA analyst. Um, she worked for the CIA. So I thought this was a great article to go over because it shows the way that the swamp flows, right? You have two very prominent people. They're both, by the way, members of the Council on Foreign Relations, um, both, both Max Boot and his wife. Uh, basically working in coordination to, you know, push the agendas in the supposedly unbiased press of foreign governments. And if you look at Mash Max Boot's publishing history, this is essentially what he's been doing for Israel recently, um, pushing pushing their agenda. So Sue Me Terry, ex CIA analyst and former director of Korea, Japan, and Oceanic Affairs at the White House National Security Council indicted on criminal charges accusing her of what, working as a agent of the government of South Korea allegedly in exchange for luxury gifts including designer handbags Terry the wife of Washington Post com columnist and notorious Russia getter Max Boot was charged with failing to register as a foreign agent and conspiring to violate the Foreign Agents Registration Act according to an indictment made public Tuesday in Manhattan federal court after a decade of in the CIA and other governmental agencies, she was approached by South Korean intelligence officers in 2013 and was subsequently warned by the FBI that the Republic of Korea might approach her again and offer her covert funds for pushing Seoul's propaganda. So she got a warning from the FBI. They sp specifically said, don't do this. She went ahead and did it anyways for the yeah. designer handbags. Um, and it's, they, well, I don't even think that they were like the absolute top tier designer handbags. <laughs> I think there were like a few rungs down, like from the very kind of top. Like I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, I haven't looked that deeply into it. <laughs> oh, well, I mean that, <laughs> that was the, that was that was what. But, the, but I mean, I think it's always was it's always, it's always worth interesting looking looking into like how these people get sold. Like I mean, it's, yeah. there, are, there are a few there are a few spies like there are a few kind of there are a few um sp uh, spies who got like millions from like from 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 what they were doing and all sorts of stuff um because of i mean yeah their um their, their client was the cia not you know like the rok which is like <laughs> um i yeah. mean yes south korea is a very strange country where like by law um cameras have to make um uh, very loud uh app like kind of capture noises because like so many um cameras get planted in women's toilets that, yeah it's like, it's, <laughs> it's it's sick um Yes. And also, I mean, let's not forget not, not that. Like, like, not like based, not like based Korea, which is yeah. like you know, led by Active Measures number one fan Kim, like OG right. Kim, we call him. Like, uh, but yeah, so, the, the, I mean, I just yeah, and I think it's sorry. So I just just really quickly, I just think as well that like because we can't play the clip, but like Max Boot, just it, it, what makes this like all the the, the sweeter is the fact that. Max Boot was an absolute scumbag who was like calling everyone under the sun, including the late great Stephen Cohen, who was this this the, the for, America's foremost academic expert and historian on on Russia and and an advocate for constructive relations between the U.S. and Russia. Was like it, um, Boot openly slandered him on a TV show because Cohen was completely quartering him 
on Russia and exposing how he didn't know what he was talking about. He was just this hawkish lunatic. He repeatedly accused him of working for the Kremlin, which is a disgusting libel. Yeah. And and actually his wife has been working for the South Koreans all along. Yeah. And um, by the way, meeting with the U.S. Secretary of State about North Korean policy uh, while while working as a basically a spy for South yeah. Korea, um, she knowingly denied being a foreign agent when testifying on Korean affairs in the House of Representatives on at least three occasions, uh, and despite being in contact with known with alleged uh, South Korean spies posing mm -hmm. as UN diplomats. Um, so off the record meetings with Tony Blinken, uh, despite being very much on the radar, warned by the FBI years prior that this was the case. She's authoring op-eds with her husband, Washington Post columnist, uh, on, you know, matters concerning the region. And, you know, did, did you have more that you wanted to go into on this before I, uh, yeah. bring up, um. Before well, you let's up. you know what? Let's look at let's look at uh, some of these um, Max Boot takes, and I mean, there's no shortage of them. Uh, but here's one: the war in Ukraine also stacks up impressively compared with other proxy wars that Republicans under the Reagan administration did so much to support, from Afghanistan to Nicaragua to Mozambique. In Ukraine, we don't have to worry about our weapons going into anti-American religious fundamentalists such as the Haqqani Network. So, of course, there's no Nazis in Ukraine. If there are, you know, they're uh, mm -hmm. not, at least not religious fundamentalists. Um, yeah. Should South Korea go nuclear? That is a decision for Seoul, not Washington. Here are 18 reasons Trump could be a Russian asset. Mm. And given what we know about, know now about Trump-Russia links, Steele dossier is looking more credible. That's Max Boot in foreign policy. I mean, it's it's just it it shows the uh, it shows the the huge amount of corruption in in the think tank and uh, elite DC yeah. editorial room uh, industries. Um, I'd also point out, and I I did point this out on Twitter, another instance of the Washington Post uh, publishing basically uh, foreign propaganda. Um, Jamal Khashoggi. The murdered Saudi dissident chopped up in the Saudi embassy in Istanbul, I believe. Uh, this got very little attention at the time, but Hashoji was a asset of the Qatari government, basically. He was working for a cutout called the Qatar Foundation. And I'm just going to read these two small excerpts from the Washington Post at the time, because he was not writing his own articles. Mm. He didn't really speak English, um, yet his articles were being published in English through the Washington Post. And I would add that the editorial editor at the time, Karen Ataya, mm. was all over the mainstream media, you know, propped up as this hero of the free press while she was allowing foreign propaganda to run through her her newspaper. Perhaps the most problematic for Khashoggi were his connections to an organization funded by Saudi Arabia's regional nemesis, Qatar. Text messages between Khashoggi and an executive at the Car Qatar Foundation International showed that the executive, Maggie Mitchell-Salem, at times shaped the columns he submitted to the Washington Post, proposing mm -hmm. topics, drafting material, and prodding him to take a harder line against the Saudi government. Hashochi also appears to have relied on a researcher and translator affiliated with the organization, which promotes Arabic language education in the United States. Hashochi and Salem seem to understand how this association with a Qatar-funded entity could be perceived, reminding one another to keep their arrangement, quote, discreet. His, he voiced concern that his family could be vulnerable. As she reviewed a draft of the August 7th column, she accused him of pulling punches. You moved off topic and seemed to accuse Riyad, uh, seemed to excuse Riyadh. It's highly problematic. The next day he wrote back saying that he had submitted the column, saying, they're going to hang me when it comes out. So he knew that he was playing with fire. He mm. 
basically pleaded for them to tone down the level of rhetoric directed at Saudi Arabia that he was publishing. And he was killed just months later. Mm. So what, you know, as, as I tweeted is the entire Washington post editorial department, just an influence shop for foreign governments. It seems so. Yes. <laughs> yes. But it's just like, but this is the thing is that like several the, the people are pointing out in the comments. I think that, yeah, it bears, it does bear repeating that. And I think that we should close on this note that, and, um, Boots and his wife frequently wrote articles together, and their article on in May on the uh, on strengthening the tripartite South Korea Japan U.S. relationship via nukes um, and deepening military co cooperation. Uh, it, I pointed out on Twitter that this looked like for a foreign influence operation. Um, and so they added an editor's note on the 18th of July saying, um, two days ago, a federal indictment was made public alleging that Sumi Terry acted as an unregistered foreign agent of the South Korean government. If true, this is information that would have been pertinent for the post publication decision. Miss Terry has denied all the charges, though, and has asserted through counsel that the allegations in the indictment are unfounded. Um, I mean, you do wonder whether um, Max Boot is currently shitting himself um, at the prospect of um, also being prosecuted under Farah. That would be quite funny, wouldn't it? Um, although, I mean, she's ex-CIA and like, given Jeff Bezos um, deep and hearing ties to the CIA, Max Boot is current CIA and we know that they right. are they are uh, insulated from prosecution for very serious crimes. But luckily, Alex and I are on hand to hold them to account. Hey everyone, um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.